the end of the last video, we just added the correlation GUID to our request and response schemas. Then we went to our inventory routine and we added it to the map so that the GUID would be copied from the request to the response. Now we need to go back to our big orchestration, PO Demo 1, and right now if we tried to compile this, let me just show you what would happen. Uh, or maybe you can think ahead and guess. What will happen if I try to compile this right now? What error will I get? So here I'm trying to send a message called message inventory request. Can you see what the error might be before I show you? Well, the error is we never constructed that message. You can't just send a message if you never built it. Um, so actually, we have other errors that are even more serious, okay? Other uh, typos and stuff. So one of those is we can't have the if statement inside of the message assignment, okay? And the second one is talking about correlation. And that was where we were headed next, okay? So let's fix the uh, if statement here. What that's basically saying is we can't do this. We can do it in a business biz talk expression shape, but not a message assignment shape is kind of a pain. Okay, so here's the get around we're going to do for this. We're going to take this logic from here, copy it. We know we can do an if statement in a regular expression shape. So we're going to copy the logic here. The problem here is you can't update a message variable inside the expression shape. So how do we resolve the catch-22? So what we're going to do is we're going to go create a little variable that's not in a message, and we will call it variable is in stock, and we're going to make that a boolean. And in this shape here, then, we're going to just basically change to variables. Okay, and that should be v is in stock. Okay. So now that is legal. So here we're going to put here, we'll put the fake logic here. And then now this fake logic, what we're going to do is simply get rid of this and we're going to set the message is in stock to the variable v is in stock. And that should solve that problem. So now let's do our build again. down to one error which has to do with correlation. So if we double click that, what it's saying is here we can't have a receive unless it's either an activating receive or it has a correlation on it. So we're going to go now create our correlation. So I've got to make a little more room over here so you can see this. We're going to go to this orchestration, go to the orchestration view, and we've done this before so we have correlation sets and we have correlation types. So I'm going to add a new correlation type here, different from the one before. And this one, again, we need a little bit more room. I'm sorry we don't have a bigger screen here. Okay, we're going to say new correlation. And we're going to go down to the PO stuff. And here's the PO property type schema. And there's the correlation GUID. And we add that. Okay, and then we name this something like inventory request response GUID core type. Okay, now after we rename it, we see the new name here. Then we can go create an object based on that. So correlation is like an object based on the class. The correlation type is the class. And here I'll call it the same name, except instead of correlation set, I'll call it Instead of correlation type, I'll call it correlation set. And the type I pick from the list, it'll give me a list to pick from, and I choose the one I just created. Okay, so now on the receive here and the send, the send will initialize the correlation, the response squid, and the receive will follow that. So now we'll do the build and the correlation message should go away. And we should probably have the not constructed message then. 
So now we have two errors. They're not sorting here for some reason. That's weird. Okay. A correlation may only be initialized once. And then use of unconstructed message. So let's see about the correlation can only be used once. That's kind of weird. It could be that these messages are somehow related. So if we fix this one, we're going to hope this one goes away. So now we need to construct the message before we call the other orchestration. So we're going to insert a construct message here. The message we're going to be constructing is the request for the inventory message inventory request. Okay, and inside here, do we want to use a map or do we want to just use a message assignment? So I think the map is usually the easiest way to start with. And in the map, what are we going to map? Well, in this case, yeah, once again, we don't really have any uh, all our things that we need to map are in variables, actually. So let me be. Let's, let's, be, let's be the first time we try this other technique here. Okay, that I have not taught you yet in any video up to this point. Um, we're going to add a message assignment here, and we're going to build the whole message right here. And to do that, we're going to need our good friend the XML doc. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say here XML doc dot load. And remember, load loads from a file, and load XML loads from a string. And so we're going to put an XML string right here to load our XML document. But what is that string going to be? So what we're going to do is go back to our schemas and find our inventory request schema. And we're going to get the path to that. Then we're going to take it and set its properties, and we're going to create an instance file here. So I'll call it instance one XML for the output instance file name. I'll then do right click generate instance, and then the file it generated is right here. So actually, I want to open it in the editor. So instead, come here, refresh, and that's our file. We want to include it in the project. We want to open it. And then this is our sample XML. We could take it exactly like it is, but there's one problem. Which we're going to have the quotes within quotes problem. So we're going to say edit, find replace, quick replace, and change a double quote to a single quote because XML doesn't really matter which quote we use. So now we have all single quotes in here. And now I'm going to take out the dummy fields, the dummy part number, the dummy quantity, and the dummy correlation. And that's the whole file. So now I'm going to do a copy of that with the control C. I'm going to save it back to disk. And then right here, I'm going to paste that here. Now the only problem with this technique is if you ever add a new field to that file, you're going to have to re rerun this little procedure that I just manually did. So in the future, when you add new elements and attributes, they will not be here, and then that can cause other future errors. So we're loading an XML document, and then we're going to say message inventory request is equal to XML doc. And now we're going to override all the fields using the promoted fields. And remember, we have a, something called vpart number. And then we have part quantity is V part quantity. Now, what about our GUID? When I do message inventory request dot, we don't see the GUID there because it wasn't sufficient to make it a distinguished field. I had to make it a promoted field, remember? So now I'm going to go down to the P section here. I hit P. And then here's our GUID, PO schemas, property schema, correlation GUID. And now I need to set that to some GUID that will be unique. So I'm just going to make a new GUID, system.GUID.NewGUID. And 
And then, as we showed earlier, you actually have to wrap that with a convert to string. Okay, so that should generate a whole new, brand new GUID right there. And we've populated our three fields for our message. And again, this is the first time we've used the technique of using a load XML document and then setting that document and moving it to the message. And that way we don't have to create a map. So sometimes I do a map, sometimes I do it this way. It just kind of depends on how many fields are here and other factors. Okay, so here we're going to say some good documentation, um, set values for message inventory request. We don't have room for all that, so. Okay, let's do our build. Okay, back to our other compiler here. It says the so-and-so uh, correlation set may only be initialized once. Okay, this is another kind of sort of a biz talk gotcha. Okay, and what it means is that we're in a loop here, right? And you cannot initialize correlation in a loop because you'd be initializing it more than one time. Okay, so there's no, unfortunately, a real easy get around for that without doing what I call tricks. So the problem is right here, we initialize the correlation and then see it realizes that's in a loop and for some reason they don't want you initializing it more than once. So the solution for that is to initialize the message outside of the loop. And I don't hear many people talking about this technique. Um, unfortunately, there is no command or shape in BizTalk called initialize correlation. Okay, So the only way to initialize correlation is to actually send a message. So that means what we'll have to do is actually send sort of a dummy message before we get in the loop. And that's what I'm going to proceed to write the code for that right now. So the next question is, can we use direct binding? And that's not good because if we send this message to the message box, it'll try to call that other orchestration. Um, you know, maybe I'm thinking other possible tricks, but they don't really work either. If you put here like a um, a decide shape and you say only the first time initialize and then the next time don't initialize. See, I don't think the compiler is smart enough to realize that either. So you'd still be getting the same compiler. So somehow we need to send a message before we go into the loop that has that correlation token in it. Okay. So right here we're going to add a send and we'll put this in a group box to document what we're doing. We're going to call this init correlation before loop. And so what we need to do is send a message to the disk. And what we'll do is we'll try to send the same message, but we'll actually use a disk file. There are a couple of utilities I've seen published on the internet called the null adapter, and the other one's called a nope. NOPE adapter. And these adapters could be used as well, but you actually have to install them and, and so on. So using the adapters that come with BizTalk, we're just going to send a message to a dummy file on the disk. So we're going to attempt to send the same message, and I'm just kind of hoping that's not going to mess up our correlation here. So the message we're sending is inventory request. I mean, it's not going to mess up correlation, but what I would be concerned about is it would actually call the other orchestration, which is not what we want at this time. So that's inventory request. So we'll create a port over here now called port uh, we'll call it null uh, init inventory request correlation. receiving, no, we'll be sending, and it will be a specify later, so that we'll have to bind that.
again, it puts the port down here, and we need to move it back up higher. Right here. We want to connect those two together. So this will be send init correlation. Sorry. And then let's see. On the correlation, here, here we're going to initialize. And then down here on this end now, we don't need to initialize at all, so we'll just turn that correlation off. Now, that should fix the compile error for here. But now the trick is we have to create the GUID before we do the loop. And then the next question we have to run through in our mind is, can we use the same GUID every time we loop? And the answer would be yes, because you know the message is always going to be coming back to us, and nobody else will have that same GUID. And this loop is one at a time. So yes, we can use the same GUID. So now we need to construct basically the same construct we did here. We need to do up here before we initialize the correlation. So here. Um, let's just set this to zero and set that to zero and let's write us a good comment here that says we only do this because we cannot set the correlation in a loop and instead of creating a new GUID here what we could actually do is use our orchestration GUID so right here let's use str I, oops sorry I think it's called str process ID. So if you remember, let me just show you that. A long time ago, we set here at the top, that's not it. We got the process ID, which is the, basically the, the GUID of our orchestration, our instance ID. And so we can use that because that's not used in any other correlation that I know of. So right here, why do we have an error? Oh, part number can't be zero. It needs to be blank. So we construct this message. And we set it equal to process ID, and then we send it. Now inside the loop, we have to, of course, use the same GUID now here. So we can't generate a new GUID every time. We have to use the same one that we used when we initialized our correlation. Otherwise, we'll have correlation issues. Okay, so now let's see if we build. And the build was successful. So now let's do a deploy solution. Keep in mind that this time I added a port. So anytime I add a port after I deploy, I need to go change my binding for my orchestration. And that means we'll need to go to the disk and we'll need to create a, a file where we can write this, these dummy records. So we'll create something here called map demo out dummy set correlation. It's a nice long name like that. Meanwhile, our deploy has succeeded. I'll go to BizTalk Admin. And I'll stop this video now, actually, and then we'll continue in the next video.